What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Uh, we get to talk about basketball today, which is nice because it was a pretty ugly day of football. I really, uh, I mean, I enjoyed watching the game. I enjoyed that it was competitive the second game. I, I, it was just, with all the injuries, I mean, I, I don't know. It was just like a really, really ugly day. Um, I did not do well DFS-wise, and I'm ready to move on to NBA. Sheets, do you have anything you want to throw out there? I know you played yeah, some. Yeah, um, so I, uh, as usual, uh, made <laughs> made up for the football with a, with a good hockey hit yesterday, sort of. And an LOL thing, whatever. I, I, you know, it's good that that, that was going on. Uh, I didn't have a good football day yesterday, um, but I put a lot of time into the basketball slate yesterday. Three game basketball slate because I knew nobody was going to be paying attention at six o'clock on on. Right? And I am so tilted. All right, so they uh, they had a seven a six o'clock game and like a seven o'clock game and an eight o'clock game. So after the six o'clock games were going, I wanted to do some late swapping, and. I played in the 555. I did it was, it was the typical Sunday 555. It's like 10K for first, right? So so I, I did like I went into Saber Sim and I launched it and I did a late swap and it's and it wanted to give me a combination of Giannis with Moses Brown for like the last two games, right? I'm like, Moses Brown. So I went, I looked, I looked at the uh see if he was starting. No, he wasn't starting. I was gonna see if 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 some way Zubach was questionable, no. You know, I'm like, the hell do I want to play Moses Brown for? I mean, I, I guess if it's a blowout, you know, whatever, um, that's possible. But no, I decided I'm going to stick with it. I'll play my chalky Norman Powell and 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 um, Terrence Mann, who are going to rate to get like, all the usage with Paul George and everybody out. And uh, and I just didn't play Moses Brown. And I will. And Moses and the game was over after like the first quarter, pretty much. Right. And they ended up like sitting all the chalk players like for the last quarter and a half and let Moses Brown rack up 30 freaking fantasy points. And, and I was and I still got 12. OK, yeah. so God knows I probably would have won, you know, if I if I, right. if I if I stuck with the Moses Brown. And that's not the worst of it. This morning I wake up, I look at Discord. Some in our Discord says, well, you know, I don't know if I lost, but I know that at least you sheets had all <laughs> Moses Brown. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna like punch you in the nose. <laughs> I, I think I, I think it was supposed to be a nice comment. I actually think, think no, no, it, no, it was. It was definitely yeah. was. It definitely was. Oh, so anyway, man. um, so that kind of saved my NBA a little bit. But uh, tonight, um, I uh, my my daughter has something in the city tonight. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna I'm gonna play up, but I'm probably gonna play one lineup. Mm -hmm. Um, the good news is, um, uh, whether it's good or bad, I I know exactly what I want to do. Well, not exactly. I I know. Okay. Exactly where I want to start, and then probably just figure out like the rest of it. So oh, I think wow. it's a good line. It's a good one lineup day, like for me. Okay. okay. So that's so that's good news. Um, but I'll be. But we'll go through everything. And listen, it's a. Uh, there's no hockey today. Um, uh, so it's just I'm just gonna play the one lineup in the NBA. I won't be around for live, obviously. Um, and there's gonna be nothing but well, not saying nothing but because there's golf and all the other stuff, but there's no hockey for like a week because of the all star game, right? Um, so uh, I'm ready to get after this NBA slate. Let's do it, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's uh, definitely an interesting one. I'm trying to figure out, I'm curious what your thing is to do because I'm pretty sure what I know what I'm gonna do. I just yeah. wondering uh, how, how much I'm gonna commit to it, but we'll see in a second. Um, starting with the first game, uh, Orlando and Philly. I am like, it, you know, everybody's at that price range on Orlando where they're kind of like seem playable, but I just don't really have a lot of interest in any of them individually. Uh, I think Harden and Embiid are both completely reasonable plays on the other side, but I, I don't see anybody as being a massive priority here. How about you? Unless Embiid, I mean, Embiid's questionable, but uh, not, nothing, nothing at, at first look that's, uh, that stands out for me. How about you? Yeah. I mean, one thing you could say about Embiid is he's going to be low owned. Um, mm -hmm. and Embiid low owned is always something to, to consider, but, uh, I don't have, again, I'm only going to play the one lineup. So right now he's not going to be in it. Um, uh, hardened, I suppose, you know what I mean? Like if you're playing 150 lineups or 50 lineups, you'll probably get to some of these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're low enough on where I'm not going to dispute it. But like, like you said, I mean, as far as priority plays go, nothing really. And then on Orlando, I mean, they're all, they're all playing. You know what I mean? If they're all playing, it means I probably don't want to play them. You could get a little bit of, of, of Marco Fultz revenge, maybe. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just inventing stuff at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, probably not much from this game, if anything. 
Yeah, the only thing that that might be like the, the two most interesting plays to me are like the like, well, well, the most interesting play is Jalen Suggs. Um, I, I, I'm wondering about his minutes coming back when they're going to come back. Um, I, I don't know. They're bringing him along slowly, but he's you know he I don't know, but he's he should be good to he should be good to play minutes now, and he played 26 in the last game after being in the teens for a while. So it's 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 a it's a it's maybe a little bit of a thin value, but I, I do think at some point you're going to see Suggs back in that mid twenties range, and I think that he's better than a thirty three hundred player. So it's the only thing I really strongly considered. Um, all right, let's move over to uh, to the next one. We've got the Lakers in Brooklyn, and this to me looks like what we what you wanted to do tonight. Um, I I think that depending on who the Lakers end up starting, like you, you see at Saberson that Toscano Anderson is, a, is projecting really well. I don't know. I, I don't even know that he starts um, to me. It's, it's the Westbrook Schroeder, uh, Rui, Thomas Bryant, all of these guys I have interest in. And I think this makes for an interesting game stack. If you want to play Kyrie on the other side, um, actually you could play Kyrie on the other side. And I think that Claxton is, is firmly in play as as well as Royce O'Neal. So I think this game makes for like a nice game stack. What do you think about this one? Yeah, this is, that's what I'm doing. So I, I, it's going to be Westbrook, uh, Rui uh, and, and Bryant for the Lakers and, and Tyree for the Nets and then figure out the rest of my lineup. And that, that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know anything about the Toscano Anderson starting business. Um, and yeah, the Schroeder would be the next, the next decision point. Like I would play, that would be the next guy I might think of playing, but these, these are the, these are the three. You listen, I've obviously had good success playing with Rui when he was on the other team. Um, and uh, with no AD nor um, LeBron, there's the usage to go around. I'll keep playing, you know, play Westbrook in the spot and, Brian's been just fine. Um, so those, those are the three guys I like. And Kyrie, listen, we, we said this this whole season that he's going to pop eventually. And you didn't really, you only got like a, one, a couple of chance to really get him at low ownership. Um, and now he's at 60 fantasy points a game pretty much. <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a good matchup. And and it's, like you said, there are values, there's values on the Lakers. And this is all makes for a perfect, perfect game stack. So this is. This is what I'm starting with, and listen in the in my one lineup build. This is I'm just telling you, this is what it's going to look like, um, unless something really weird happens. And I don't know exactly what the rest of it's going to look like. I have, a, I have some you know, listen. That's what that's what this video is for, and that's what for our discussions are for. But you know, this is this is I think is a good listen. It's going to be chalky. This, this these four guys, right? But, I don't know about. I'm curious where the Lakers guys end up. Right? I mean, early early things don't like love them the way that you would think they would. But, but I bet you by the time the slate locks, you're probably right. Yeah, but this is this is this is what I kind of well, and again, if 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 Luca ends up getting getting ruled out again, I mean then it's like a whole other thing. But but uh but this is this is where I'm starting my one lineup build. Uh and for all the reasons that you mentioned. Uh Claxton, he would be another guy that I might consider as another dude. Royce O'Neal, maybe as another guy. Seth Curry, maybe, you know, he's cheap enough. Um but uh, these are the these are the four the four core guys for me. Yeah, I'm with you, except for that. I, I just want to throw out that I'm a little confused at why Schroeder isn't projecting better. Um, I really like him here, and I mean the guy. You know, three out of his last five, he was. This is with AD and, and LeBron. Like he's putting up 37, 46, 49. Yeah, I'm in. I mean, this sounds good to me. How many? Yeah, guys I, I, I don't see why he's. Um, why he's not getting a little bit more love. It's like his, his actual projection isn't any different than it would be if LeBron and AD were playing. So I'm kind of confused. Uh, by that. You know what? I guess it's because he's only, he's point guard only eligible as are Kyrie and Westbrook. Um, yeah. But I don't think, West, I mean, Westbrook's not looking like he's going to be very popular. His, his projection isn't great either. It's, it's, so. it's, it's 40. So that's pretty, it's pretty solid, I guess. Yeah. But, um, and, and I, and I feel nervous a little bit about the Thomas Bryan thing. He's sort of fallen a little bit out of, favor even before ad was was there but i, I don't know i don't know I, I think that he i think he's a better play than he's currently projecting for so i i'm sort of with you i, I like the idea of, of getting a game stack here and maybe getting four or five pieces uh four or five pieces probably about right for me that's that's where i'm at uh you know for in terms of what my priorities are right you know today um wanted to move on to golden state and okc yeah so this is another really important uh 
uh, game for me. Um, mm -hmm. Because like even if you're playing these four, there's, there's, there's ways you can go, right? You can either play four, like, 5,500 guys, or you could spend up for one other guy and get a bunch of – if you could find a bunch of cheapos. And OKC just has this rotating, you know, kind of fantasy point charity event where, like, they just start <laughs> – they start like a new guy at 3K and play him 30 minutes, you know? So, <laughs> so I don't know exactly which one that's going to be. Like, yes, last time it was Wiggins, right? Started him, you know, whatever, 3K, whatever he was, he played 30 minutes. And that's the way that's going to be, you know? Or is it going to be Isaiah Joe getting a start or something like that, you know? So that is something I'm going to have to look at um, because if, if if you do get the, you know, the, the <laughs> OKC charity run uh, starting one of these guys, um Oh, listen, they're probably going to be good plays. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the other guy that I really want to, that I can, that I can fit in is I can, I can play Shea here um, at, at 98 or something like that. And I think that makes for a very, very good play. Um, mm -hmm. So I like that. I didn't get to too much on golden state, if anything. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at who's starting for OKC, what kind of news we get out of there, you know, anybody new starting or anything like that. Um, if they start Wiggins again, I'm just going to have to presume he gets the same treatment, you know, so I'll probably have to play him again. Um, but for me, I, I'd love to, I'd love to get Shea in there. Um, mm -hmm. and, but the thing is, if you get Shea, it's because you can get on the 3,800. So we'll, we'll see what, 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 what opens up, I guess. Yeah. Um, if Wiggins starts again, it is kind of a tough fate. Like I, I just like he can be so ineffective for for so long, but if he's gonna, I mean, he played thirty minutes the last game. It's just really hard to know that he's gonna do that again. And I I think there will be other value by the time the slate actually you know st starts happening. And but as of right now, uh, it looks like the Wiggins Wiggins. Um, it looks like both Wiggins on both sides. I, I like Andrew Wiggins if he plays, and I like Aaron Wiggins uh, if he starts. That's pretty much what I have and as priorities. I do think Shea's a good play. I agree with that and. The only question is, is, is maybe are there, are there maybe other spend ups at other positions because we like some other point guards like Westbrook. Well, I, I like the other three point guards, Westbrook, uh, Kyrie and uh, Schroeder. So I, I actually think you could make an argument for Josh Giddy if you wanted a different position. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a good matchup for these guys. OKC has been extremely competitive at home. Kind of a little bit like funny to see like Golden State favored by five on the road when they're like, they've won like three road games all year. <laughs> Um, and, and, and OKC has been pretty good at home. It's really weird this year in the Western conference, literally nobody has a, Oh, only the Kings have a winning road record. They're 11 and they're 11 and 10. Nobody else is even above 500 on the road. Just kind of a funny thing. Um, but I, 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 you know, my, my first look is definitely just with the, both Wiggins are, it makes some sense. Isaiah Joe is always a good tournament flyer, but it's, it, he's never going to start. He's just going to, it's just a matter of unless Shea and Giddy are out or something, but he does always have upside. It's just, I think I'd rather, I don't know. I like, I like the idea of playing Joe better than I like the idea of playing Wiggins, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess, because I, I don't know. I, I feel very iffy about this Wiggins play. I guess you could tell. Um, all right. What else you got uh, for the Sacramento, Minnesota? Um, So you're supposed to like something, right? It's like it's a yeah, zero really point spread and, Zero point spread in two thirty seven, um, and yet I'm not getting all that much. I, I think that I, on fan, I was building. I was building one fan duel lineup, and I was able to play Anthony Edwards there. Um, so that that's one thing. And also, for whatever reason, on DraftKings, this has happened the last couple of times I've been doing these hand built things. I have like these one these one offs that are left to be played, and I ended up like with the spot for Kevin Herter for some reason that mm -hmm. was, that was a couple of times ago and it, it's, it's the same again. Um, so that's interesting. Um, aside from that, I mean, I'm you're supposed to play more, you know, like, listen, if I weren't spending the money on, on uh, Kyrie and or Shea and or whatever, I think that Sabonis would be a really, really good play here um, at mm -hmm. 10 three. Um, so maybe do that. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, Herder, just kind of a one-off. Edwards, and then uh, uh, maybe uh, Sabonis if you're not spending up for Kyrie. Yeah, I, I'm not particularly interested in Sabonis. Um, 
but it's fine. Uh, I have no issue with it. Like I, everybody looks just okay to me. Uh, if I had to, you know, gun to my head, if I had to pick anybody, Kyle Anderson is probably my favorite play in this game. Um, I think Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell are both completely in play. And uh, uh, Anthony Edwards has been really good last late, lately and, and maybe getting a little bit overlooked um, today. So I, I, I might, I might revisit the Edwards. And, and by the way, so is D'Angelo Russell. They both have been putting up like, yeah, really good numbers at, the, at their prices. So both worth considering. Uh, I think Gobert is also worth considering. It's not like the uh, old Sabonis uh, in a lot of ways. He doesn't take the threes that he used to. You know, you're getting him at like one three a game. So I'm not worried about him pulling Gobert away too much. And I think that that's a good it's a good rebounding matchup for Gobert um, just because the pace should, should offer a lot of rebounds just to, you know, because they're playing so quick. And I think the price is fair. So a lot of guys who look like they're 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 adequate plays, but not guys who are standing out to me as being like must plays. If there was one, Anthony Edwards or Kyle Anderson are probably my two favorites. All right, what do you got for what you got next? Uh, Washington. Yeah, I want to just shout something out for a second. I got yeah. posted it somewhere. Um, if you like are into basketball, actually in the NBA, like I know you are. Bobby, there's an amazing podcast uh, right now that's out. Um, I'll, I'll send I'll send you the link. Josh Engelman, who I follow a lot, he's like one of the awesome guys. Whatever I, I follow, like a lot of the Twitter feeds he follows. Yeah, and he he re- retweeted this. It's something called like the NBA like mock trade deadline podcast, which uh-huh. is just absolutely amazing. You have these three dudes. I don't know how they know all this stuff, but three guys that they first they go through all thirty teams and they basically role play like. Oh, this is the kind of guys that we're looking for. Here's the guys who get ready to give give up. And then they do these like mock trade conversations where they say, well, I'll, I'll, well, what about New Orleans? You guys want to put Herb Jones in the mix for this? And they just, they know freaking everything about all the salary cap stuff. And, and if you want, if you, if you're really a ba- basketball fan and all the, how the players go back and forth, it's freaking insane. I couldn't even keep pace after like 20 minutes, but like, it's a great hour of, of, uh, of like basketball. Now let's put it that way. Which, um, which, which tra- I, I listened to a bunch of those, um, it must be the is it the ringer one? I, I don't know which which was the podcast. Hold on, I'm gonna have to take a look at that hold one. Hold on, no, no, yeah, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it right now. Actually, um, hang on, it is, uh, one sec, um, there it is. So it is the, the Nate Duncan NBA podcast. Uh, oh. I will pull it up over here. This thing right here. Yeah. So you guys want to look oh, at that? I'll take a look at it. Yeah. It's, oh, with uh, Kevin Pelton. Yeah, yeah, it is those guys. Oh, you know these guys? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, right, so, yeah. so moving on, Washington, San Antonio, there are two guys from this game that I really think you should be – I mean, they're, they're – I think you should be playing almost every day um, if you're if you're mass multi-entering or whatever, even if you're not. I mean – and you turned me on to the first guy, like first game of the season, but this so chan- Sohan – I mean, like, if it's like a game where he's going to be let loose, you know what I mean? Like, he's just a great play. Um, um, you know, don't play him in back-to-backs if he even plays at all. You know, don't whatever. But if it's like a game that he can freaking get in there, I mean, I think he's just a great play every day. And the guy from Washington, and and, and Abdia, is, like, playing really, really well all season, you know? So, um, I those those two guys are just – I don't even know how they're projecting today. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, you know what? I guess they're both fine again. Like, Sohan almost, almost never projects to be that great. But every once in a while, I'll put up, you know, not even every once in a while, I'll put up good games, you know, pretty frequently, actually. Davdia is, like, freaking consistent now. I mean, at 40, he shouldn't be 4,700 anymore. He just should. Well, the only thing to keep in mind is that those games were without Beal and, well, some were without Beal and Porzingis. It was, Porzingis yeah. just came back. So, okay. and Monty Morris was out, too. So, but I do think with the trade of Hachimura, that means they're going to look at Avdia more. Like, they, they want Avdia to play more. So, I'm kind of inclined to to a little you know agree with you a little bit. I I, I think this game has some interesting take shot pieces. I think Dan, Dan, Daniel Gafford is is one of them. Um, you know he he hit 51 fantasy points the other night, and he's been basically right around that 30 range. You know enough of the time with Porzingis back, I probably I probably won't end up doing it. But I, I don't think that's a bad play, and I don't think Abdi is a bad play. Like you mentioned, I think he's completely reasonable at 4700 off the bench. And he's put up, you know, the 30 and three in a row. But again, with, with Porzingis back, it's going to kill a little bit of my love for him. And I think Sohan, like you mentioned, like I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge believer that 
Sohan is going to be a good, a really, really good player for years to come. And the thing is, he's been actually pretty consistently there. And then he put up the monster game the other day. Um, I, I'm totally on board of taking shots on Sohan and those guys. So they're, again, not priorities for me, but they're definitely guys I'm willing to take a shot on with the Abdia, Gafford, Sohan. Uh, everybody else just rates to be okay for, to be, and I'm, I'm probably not going to end up getting much more of it out of this game. Um, the problem with Collins is that there's just so many centers. Um, not obviously so many, but there's like a whole, we already, I already mentioned Thomas Bryant. We're going to talk about Powell, Precious and whatever it is. And I was going to mention Polo also, you know, it's just, uh, listen, center is always a good position, right? As you taught, you taught me my first, yeah, first day playing DFS, yeah. like, you know, the algorithm is always broken for centers, you know? So, yeah. so, uh, um, it's not so easy to say, Oh boy, Zach Collins is a great player. There's a lot of good plays. Um, yeah, I back think Collins is one I don't know if I can like. I I think the minutes are going to be all like a like in the always going to be like what eighteen to 20, 24 maximum. Uh, it's fine. He just he's literally never like. I mean, he had the one weird thirty four minute game. And I think he had a twenty seven minute game this year, but it's it's pretty unusual that he'll get more. And that those were without Podol. Um, Podol, they're they're just messing around with his minutes before they trade him. And I don't really feel great about, I don't really feel great about the other spots for the Spurs with all their guys being back, but somebody probably gets there, whether it's Romeo Langford or something like that. I just, I just probably am going to be off of all of it uh, other than maybe the Sohan play personally. All right. Uh, Dallas, Detroit. Is that what, you, what is that what it was? Yeah. So, so Dallas, Detroit, here's, here's the deal as far as I'm concerned. So Luca is, is, um, he's close. Uh, is a really, really good play on fan. I mean, he's he's 12,000 flat on FanDuel as opposed to 12,7 on DraftKings, and that obviously makes a difference. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's, they're leaning, I guess, to, they're implying, I guess, that he's going to, to play, um, I, I, I suppose. Um, I, this is like, seems like a perfect type of game where he doesn't play 40 minutes, you know, um, they're a ten point favorite, and it's going to be one of those games where he comes in with the with the ankle sprain. He scores forty fantasy points in the first half. Everybody's all excited, and he ends up with fifty seven because he doesn't play much anymore. Um, it, it's possible. Um, uh, if he doesn't play, then obviously it's only OEM free and all these other Dallas guys just kind of get in there. Um, aside from that, though, I don't really, I don't want to play Dale uh, uh, Finney Smith. I don't really want to play Dwight Powell, but like, you know, listen, he's, he's been putting up some games mm -hmm. um, one time at like 1% ownership, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I noticed that by the way, you don't think things like disappear. Like when I was away, I was watching one of your, one of your videos and, and you were mentioning that, well, listen, when you, when you said, listen, I, I know I don't usually recommend this, but do I think Dwight Powell and these dudes are in play and that's not, those are not the guys you usually play. And they ended up all doing well, I think if I'm not mistaken. Um, so anyway, uh, he's yet another one of these centers that that looks decent. Um, on Detroit, again, I, I'm been, I've been pretty focused on kind of like the one lineup thing today. Mm -hmm. So I kept on getting back to Alec Burks as being one of those, one of these guys that fits in these in the shooting guard. You know what I mean? Like like slot at, at cheap. Mm -hmm. um, so forty nine hundred for Alec Burks just kept coming up when I've been when I've been playing around with this. So. That's all I pretty much have is the, the Alec Burks and I guess Luca on Fandle. I'm not going to play him on DraftKings because, again, I'm just doing something else. Um, but that's where I'm at. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I, 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 I'm OK with the Alec Burks thing. I'm not it's not a it's not a guy I'm like desperate to go out of my way for. But I think the price is reasonable and I'm OK with, you know, I'm OK with it. Um, nothing on Detroit uh, other than that really stands out. Keep an eye out like any day, you know, this Bogdanovich trade is going to happen at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen sometime soon. Um, so just keep an eye out for Detroit and, 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 you know, when they're playing later, it always makes me a little nervous because I'm, I'm worried the guys lead their trade or they, they end up just sitting two or three guys randomly sometimes. Um, but right now it doesn't seem like there's anything that's a massive priority. I do think Burks is the best play on Detroit. And I think that Luca, if he plays, is going to crush. Um, and I think he probably is going to play, but he definitely hurt himself in the last game. So 
I, I am a little bit curious to see how that shakes out. Of course, if Luca's out, that changes everything. And then we want to get all the exposure to the other, the Dinwiddies and Hardaway. Even, well, Dinwiddie 85, maybe you could pay, but that, that's a pretty, pretty ridiculous tag. But he's put up 57 and 59 the last two games. Right. So yeah. Can't sneeze at it too much. But uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm having, I have Luca's on track to play. But I, 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 you know, with it, with that, I don't think I have any anybody I need to play here. But I, I don't know. I think Finney Smith and Powell are fine. Um, I'm not going out of my way to get them, but they both are are pieces that I don't mind early in the, at first look. But it's really hard to do without knowing about Luca. Hopefully, we hear a little bit more after shoot around this morning. All right, um, Toronto and Phoenix. Uh, I, look, uh, I, it's 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 at that point now with with the freshest thing where I think we you know kind of got to keep rolling with it. <laughs> like he's he's getting the minutes, um, fifty one hundred, very reasonable. They're changed they changed their lineup. Uh, I, I am completely fine with Precious today. Uh, I think that he he versus like Gafford versus Sohan and Abdia kind of guys are all they're all kind of in a similar group, but I, I have him a little bit better. Um, everybody else, as always, is in play on on Toronto, but nobody who jumps out to me as as this being a particularly great matchup for them. On the Phoenix side, um, I think Chris Paul is 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 in is definitely in play, but again, I don't love the matchup. I think my favorite play here might be Cam Johnson, actually. So that's that's what I have for this one. What do you got? Yeah, so I had Precious the other day, and uh, obviously we don't can't count on perfect perfect efficiency like like that but yeah. um but nonetheless i mean and at least they moved him up to 5100 yeah um, that's at least something uh he's another guy you know this is like the the, the center shuffle here brian uh precious powell to a lesser extent collins like you were kind of alluding to earlier Potal, uh gobert even clax i mean like a, a lot of guys here yeah, and you can play. Maybe maybe that's what I'll end up doing. So so I'm going to play one lineup. I'll probably maybe I'll play the box out as well. So maybe I'll put three in the box out, and then I'll shuffle. You know what I mean? I'll shuffle the centers. I won't play like Thomas Bryant and all of them, for example. You know, mm -hmm. um, and and because listen, if if he doesn't do quite as well, these all these centers can put up fifty. You know, right? And, and you kind of want to have access to that possibility. Um, so I'm not quite getting to the main guys. On Toronto though today, uh, maybe just because of the matchup or whatever, but uh, I guess Siakam would be next. But for me, it's probably just weirdly Precious or nothing. I don't know. I think Siakam is hurt a little bit by Precious starting. To be honest, um, the rebounds you see the last the games where Precious has started are, are way down. The rebounds actually have been down for him in general. And he hasn't, we haven't been seeing those monster games like we were seeing earlier in the season, but a lot of those games, Van Vliet was out or OG was out or something. And we don't really, you know, oh, we do have OG out, but like, you know, we don't have multiple pieces out and, and you do have another, another big playing. So yeah, I, I think I might have to revisit the Toronto thing later because I, I, I do like when it, whenever somebody's out to try to find a guy, but it, it's not, a, it's not the ideal matchup and there's just other plays I like a little bit better. Um, I do like Cam Johnson, though, a little bit on the other side. Yeah, I agree with that, by the way. I mean, about the Cam Johnson play. I mean, he's been uh, he's been pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. they, they 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 were they were easing him back in with the minutes. And then they played the the eighteen minute game uh, when he was on the yeah, minutes. And he was going to have seven hundred. They were up by thirty yeah. or something. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. And then I think I played him against Dallas actually, and he had a very very nice game. Yeah. Um, I think I played I played him all the games actually. I think I played him in San Antonio too, whatever. But if you're getting 30 minutes plus out of him um at at, at a small forward position where you usually need to play somebody, um, mm -hmm. I think that's a, I, I agree with that. I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Um and uh sneaky play from that game, Chris Boucher. Uh I think absolutely has a ceiling. We all know that. And he's starting, he's like back in the the the, the regular rotation in his 18 to 22 minutes in he can get, you know, he can get 35 and 22 minutes. We've seen it before. So uh, if you get the hot Boucher game, it's always an interesting flyer to take. All right. What do you got for the Atlanta, uh, Atlanta, Portland game? Well, I have to tell you what you're getting and, and whether you, whether this is the type of guy you like to play or not, you've been getting Jeremy Grant playing like 50 minutes a game. Um, 
uh, and you know, putting up some okay numbers for sixty three hundred. Um, so that that's the one thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to get to uh, to Lillard today. Um, just again for no other reason than I just like other guys a little bit better. But um, but you know, Lillard's been no disputing what he's been doing. Um, mm-hmm. And on the Atlanta side, I'll tell you every, every time I. I think of playing like DeJounte Murray when Trey Young is there. I just just doesn't feel right for some reason. I mean, it should, you know, it shouldn't bother me that much, but I just always just for whatever reason would rather just play him a little when he's a little chalkier when, when Trey isn't there. Cause when Trey gets into freaking that mode, like no one else is going to do anything. Um, uh, Or no one's else going to have the opportunity to do anything. Let's put it another way. The other, the other guy that I've been, I I guess he just hasn't been, look to to do much of late is is Bogdan Bogdanovich so just kind of off my radar for like a little while um mm-hmm. 9700 not really for me so I don't know it's gonna be one of those where if I, if I do end up biting the bullet and play 30 lines maybe I'll get to some of this game but aside from that I maybe like I said maybe a one off of Jeremy Grant if he fits or something like that mm-hmm. but uh, that's pretty much it yeah, I actually don't mind if you wanted to get a little mini stack of a game here. I, I like Simons and Grant, um, mm-hmm. and I think that Josh Hart is in play, assuming that he's that he's a go, um, of like a full go. Um, he got banged up and then missed the last game. If he's out, might open some other things up. Nurkic is questionable. So if you do get some value in, in, in backloading, and Trey is questionable as well. So mm-hmm. you, you can definitely, like, consider, like, trying to backload here. I think that these guys probably play. But uh, the guys for me, I, I like Trey. I think Trey is a little like I like Trey a little bit better than I like Siakam in a similar price point. Okay. And I like uh, I like the, the Simons and Nurk to the other side. The problem with Trey is back back to the point guard issue um, that we keep running into. So uh, the other one is, you know, why aren't we playing? Like I know that there's a lot of centers we've talked about, but like I feel like Capella should be right there with these other guys. Um, I know Kongu's gotten some run, but like Capella's put up, you know, 36, 38, 41 last, the last three yeah. games. I like the matchup for him. Um, I could see Capella having a big game here. So I definitely have some interest in, in getting pieces of this one, uh, particularly the, the, the Simons grant, uh, and then potentially Capella, uh, would be my favorites and, and still considering Trey, it's just hard to get him in with all the point guards that I like. So I still think I'm going to be heavily, you know, as a sum up, like I'm going to be heavily focused on the Lakers in Brooklyn. I think they're, the Lakers are being under projected, but keep an eye out for the starting lineup. Cause I think, I do think that, that, you know, matters. Um, and I think that uh, the next, you know, priorities, I, I think, you know, we'll have to see what other value opens up to what we want to do with guys like Wiggins. I like that mid tier, you know, you mentioned Burks and we talked about Soham, Gafford, Abdia, Precious, all of those guys in that mid tier work out pretty well. And I, you know, in addition to Kyrie and, and Westbrook, you can probably get another another decent spend up. For me, that would probably be. I'm not, I don't know actually who it would be right now because everybody I keep running into that I want to play as a point guard. So uh, maybe I'd have to find uh, find another a, another mid tier thing or something because I, I I guess Anthony Edwards would be my favorite non point guard spend up. Yeah. So again, just presume I'm not playing one lineup. I mean, two two of the games that you touched on. Um, is pretty good mini, uh, pretty good stack games. I think Golden State OKC, like you mentioned, I think Wiggins, Wiggins, for example, mm-hmm. uh, with Shea or, or whoever, um, or Giddy. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that the um, that that last game you mentioned, Atlanta, Portland. I mean, you want to just listen. You want to just go play Trey and, and Lillard. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna bother you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, I, I promise you this: that no matter what your score is going into that game, like you're not a lock <laughs> when you got Trey and when you have right. Trey and Lillard. You know, both not playing defense and both like, you know what I mean? Like, like that could, that could, that could definitely, uh, that could definitely blow up. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Lillard, who put up 60 real life points on the third and four nights. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean that's yeah. unbelievable. It's no. guys, the guy's been amazing as a real life scorer. If you look at his actual just real life points, you would think that they were fantasy points. Like, it's just nuts what he's been doing. Um, he's, he, you know, I, I don't even know where he's at now in terms of scoring, but he's got to be right at the top or right near the top. Everybody's scoring so much this year, it's hard to keep track. But uh, yeah, I, I don't mind that either. Anyway, it should be an interesting day. A lot of, a lot of point guard. There's a lot of good point guard plays, just to keep in mind. Um, and it's going to keep Luca a little bit lower on. So 
Maybe that's something I end up doing by the end of the day if we get enough value to open up. Anyway, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, keep it. Uh, stay with me after yeah. you hit recording. All right. Good luck to everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll take something down. I'll see you guys live at 6 Eastern.